It's a rivalry renewed in Fayetteville as Arkansas and Texas get set to do battle. We are here previewing, predicting, and breaking down this game between the Hogs and the Longhorns. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips. He's Cole Thompson. appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. This segment brought to you by our friends over at Roback. Head to Roback.com. Use promo code SECU for 20% off your first purchase. Again, guys, that's our friends over at Roback. Promo code SECU to get 20% off today. The Arkansas Razorbacks and Texas Longhorns get set to do battle. And there's bad blood in Fayetteville when these two square off. We are here previewing, predicting, and breaking down this game, I am Chris Phillips, helping me do so. My good friend, Cole Thompson, joins me once again. Cole, what's going on, my friend? Appreciate you taking the time and excited to break down this game with you. You heard Sam Pittman say it himself. It has nothing to do with the actual game of foot. What happens with the Razorback season? There is nothing more than Hog fans would love than to put a little bit of a damper on Texas's route to the college football playoff. They hate Texas more than they like themselves, and they have an opportunity to not just be bowl eligible at Razorback Stadium, a second signature win in front of the hometown crowd, but also add a little bit more fuel to the fire that is going to be the race to the finish line in the SEC. I'm excited for this game. I'm excited for this rivalry. And everyone remembers the last time when Steve Sarkeesian went on up to Fayetteville. We're going to see Deja Vu 2.0. Who's to say? Yeah, Cole, to your point, it was Sark at SEC Media Days that said that Arkansas fans hate Texas more than they like Arkansas. What do you think? You agree with him there? I mean, that's I <laughs> I know Hog fans. You know them, too. I will say, and again, have nothing but great things to say about Arkansas. When we went there a few weeks ago, had a great time. But, Cole, something that stood out to me, I was in the facility touring around, and on the way to the indoor practice field, they have like the schedule on the wall with all the team's logos. And when you got to this part of the schedule, it was horns down. They are committed <laughs> to every horn on campus being horns down. Every time you see that logo in the state of Arkansas, certainly in Fayetteville, it's horns down. So he may have a point. To be Here's honest. the other thing I will say, and I know that there are going to be Texas fans that feel mighty high and confident following a signature win at Holmes. You get Quinn Ewers back to what we thought he was going to be at the start of the year. But I heard you, and all of you spoke to me in the offseason. So Arkansas fans, this has been a game that they have circled for a while. Longhorn Nation has been very docile. They, at one point, felt really confident about getting a win over Georgia and yet somehow traveling to Fayetteville. There are more than plenty of those that are out on the 40 acres that have told me, told us, this is the one game that they're shaking in their boots a little bit. And here's the crazy part of all, Chris. It's an 11 a.m. kick, which might add even more fuel to the fire because if you don't wake up early, you ain't getting off that mat, especially in front of the Hog faithful that are going to be coming out in droves down to Hog City. Yeah, Cole, to your point, some of the Texas folks I've talked to uh, over this past week, and actually the past couple of weeks, just leading up into the final part of the schedule, and you start to daydream about what, what your positioning is going to be, whether it's SEC title, playoff, whatever. But when you talk about the Arkansas game, certainly getting into this week, Cole, the folks I've talked to, UTSD. UTSD is the thing that stands out. There's some UTSD still lingering with the fine folks there on the 40 acres. Again, Cole, this is an 11 a.m. kickoff, like you mentioned, on ABC in Fayetteville, Arkansas, at Double Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium, Texas is a 15-point favorite, Cole, in this game. The over-under is set at 57.5. Texas leads the all-time series 56-23. to But again, Cole, who can forget the last time these two teams met? It was 2021, and Arkansas took Texas to the woodshed by a final score of 40 to 21. I think that was Sark's first year, if I recall first correctly. First year, and he was still going through the entire quarterback controversy. Mm -hmm. Hudson Card, Casey Thompson. That was the game where Card actually lost the starting job, and eventually things started to go in pathway for Thompson to take mm -hmm. on and control. And it was a nine-win Arkansas team, too, with yeah. K.J. Jefferson. Special year. Really, really good team there in Fayetteville. Uh, Cole, as we move into this game, break down this game, again, we mentioned the rivalry aspect. I want to start there. You know, this thing started back over the summer. Arkansas folks I've talked to, Cole. What's interesting, I've talked to both Arkansas and Texas folks over the past few months 
about this game specifically. Arkansas folks hate Texas with every fiber in their being. I think Texas folks don't like Arkansas, but they're more worried about Oklahoma. They're more worried about Texas A&M. And Arkansas, I think, is more of a team they just they don't want to lose to than they really hate and want to win. Again, I think it's what sparked Sark to say Arkansas folks hate Texas more than they like Arkansas. And Sam Pittman agreed with him. I don't know if he was joking, but he agreed with him. Either way, rivalry game, Cole, it's really fun. We kind of get like a rivalry game a few weeks before rivalry weekend. I just wonder, do emotions play into this one? I think if you're Arkansas, you kind of have to hope they do. Because from a personnel standpoint, you don't have better personnel than Texas. But what you what you could have, what you do have for sure, is the home field advantage, the home crowd. It should be very raucous, even at 11 a.m., obviously. But maybe the emotions of a rivalry game, maybe there is some, some UTSD with this Texas football team somehow, some way. Maybe, just maybe, you can capture some of that magic. And again, we've seen this in rivalry games, Cole, where throw the records out the window. We somewhat saw it in 2021. I think I recall going in that game, not a lot of folks were giving Arkansas a chance. And again, what they did to Texas goes for itself. So how much stock do you put in the rivalry game aspect of this matchup? You're right. It's not the same as Texas A&M or Oklahoma, but this is a rivalry. And it's one where I do think that Texas fans kind of are nervous about. And the reason why is because of remember last time. And, and the part when it comes to emotion is not just for Texas's standpoint of waking up and having a sluggish performance very early on and not being able to get off the mat. It's the emotion of being able to control yours if you're Arkansas. Because the last thing that you can afford to do is be up by 14 and then you get a targeting call because if you're getting a little bit too feisty or then you get a pass interference call, 15 yards. Quinn Ewers then finds a guy like Isaiah Bond for a 32-yard touchdown and they're right back in this. So emotions on both sides have to be a factor in this. If you're Arkansas, you need to stay cool, calm, collective. You can't allow the game to oversaturate itself. You can't allow the moment to get too big. You have to control your tempo. You have to control your narratives, what is in your vicinity. And if you're Texas, you can't allow the pass to, I would say, hinder you. And we saw last week against our Florida, you know what Quinn Ewers is. You know what this offense is going to be. You know what this defense can do. But the last thing that you can afford is, is to miss on those explosive plays, miss on those quality opportunities. When you have a shot, you have to take it. Because that's what this game is all about. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that for Arkansas, this is also one that you throw the kitchen sink. Because if you look at the end of the year, you don't know what to expect. You could easily finish 5-7. and seven. You could still find a way to finish 8-4. and four. I mean, the wins that they have on their schedule, Louisiana Tech, Texas, Missouri, they could find a way to still get to bowl eligibility this weekend or maybe they'll just get the ball eligibility in two weeks. But regardless, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be something if you're Sam Pittman, and, and for some people, after that LSU game, didn't have enough left. After the Ole Miss game. Okay, well, it's great that you got to win over Tennessee, but we still got to figure out what you are as a head coach. We still don't know if you're the right guy to lead the team. You get two wins against top 10 opponents, two teams that are probably going to be in the hunt for the college football playoff down the stretch. That's all you need to see that, Pro, the program is moving in the right direction. But this is one where, again, emotions are going to be riled on up from the fan bases, from the sidelines, from the boosters, from, from those that actually have seen this rivalry transpire from the Southwest Conference all the way now to the SEC, from when it was a Big 12 <laughs> SEC, about all that aside. But emotions also have to stay stable. If you, if you get too big, if you have too small, you're going to watch as the other team capitalizes on it. And so that's something that I'm going to be paying really close attention to, especially for an Arkansas team that doesn't have much to lose because they are going to probably get to bowl eligibility with that game against Louisiana Tech. However, wouldn't it be something to once again say that you can go eight and four? Yeah, Cole, I mean, even putting like the Sam Pittman stuff aside, because we can speculate on his future all we want. When you're just looking at the 2024 season for Arkansas and you know, what is it going to be when you look back? The Tennessee win, you're right. Again, we were there in person. That was a great night in Fayetteville. It was a great night to be a hog. It was a, a signature win for this program in this 2024 season. That was a great win. This is a win that would take the cake. This would yeah. be the true feather in your cap. You look back at 2024. This is how you take a, you know, let's say you finish six and six. Maybe you go seven and five. It's how you take a good year. You turn it into a great year. 
you can beat Texas. Well, it's uh, also a way that you can say we know that we had our faults, but we were able to capitalize yeah. because the Oklahoma State game still lingers around in the back of your head when you're out score when you're out gaining an opponent by over 200 yards, yet you have to go to double overtime to a team that now is probably not going to a bowl game. And you are. That's a way to say we fix the things. We knew that we had our faults, but we were able to come back. We were able to make the most adjustments, and we're right back in the conversation of seeing that trending trajectory going into 2025. And 2025 might be a year where we actually go to the playoff conversation. Yeah, hey, Cole, and to your point for Arkansas against sticking with them, it's just this is a team that's been consistently inconsistent. I mean, yeah. every single week it's up and down and up and down and up and down. You know, if even if you were able to hang close in this game, I, you know, I, I, obviously if you win, but it, it would more so you could look back on the season and say, you know what, we were inconsistent, but there was more good than bad versus we were inconsistent and it was unfortunately more bad than good most of the time. So anyways, that's one of the tough things about this game. What Arkansas are we going to get? But Cole, from the Texas perspective, you mentioned building off that Florida performance. I want to stick with the offense specifically. Quinn Ewers, the Texas offense. What do they have in store for the Hawks? I like this matchup, Cole, a lot for the Longhorns. I, I think we talked about it, obviously, in our Sunday Fun Day recap, looking back at the weekend that was. I think the bye week was the best thing that could have happened for Texas. They were able to kind of reset, recharge their batteries a little bit, refocus. I think Steve Sarkeesian is going to have a great game plan in this one. And again, like I mentioned, Cole, the thing coming out of that Florida game that you have to be a giddy about, and that was a Florida defense that had played well, the thing you got to be giddy about, Cole, is the performance you got from your quarterback, Quinn Ewers. That's the straw that stirs the drink. That's where it starts for the Texas Longhorns. You know, I think the matchup in the trenches could be interesting, right? I mean, we saw Texas um, obviously impose their will against Florida a few weeks ago, against Vandy, if you want to look into that, right? I mean, they gave up a few sacks and got pushed around at times. Arkansas has got some guys up front that can cause some damage. They got some guys in the front seven at the linebacker position too. Landon Jackson leading the way up front. Um, you know, at the linebacker spot with Xavier Sori at linebacker. And they've got some dudes. They've got some dudes on defense. But I think this is a really advantageous spot for Texas, especially if Quinn Ewers, if he can give you a similar performance like he had against Florida, yeah, they're going to be in a really good position. Here are two things that you need to know. Texas comes into this game with the number one pass defense in the country, and they also have a top 10 passing offense. Even though the people have talked about Quinn Ewers' accuracy on the explosive plays, 20-plus yards downfield, they're still top 10. Uh, here's the thing that you also need to know. Arkansas comes in with the 125th ranked pass defense and the number 11 ranked passing offense. So up tempo, deep shots down the field, trying to connect with your receivers is going to be the MO in this game. For me, you know what Quinn Ewers is. And so many people are going to are going to complain because of they want to see the overall can't miss highlight grabs, the deep shots that are piss missiles for 40 plus yard games. You got a speedy threat in Isaiah Bond. You got another guy in Isaiah in um um uh yeah, I mean another guy in jo uh, not Jonathan Cook, uh Silas Bolden. You got another guy, in Matthew Golden. And it's like, but why are we doing these dink and dunks? If the dink and dunk is working, don't go ahead and blame it. That's what you want. You want consistency. And that was the game plan that you saw last week against Florida. You had those deep shots. DeAndre Moore dropped two passes that were 20-plus yards downfield. He should have had a touchdown in the back of the end zone. He couldn't bring it in. But you know what? You still had a five-touchdown day over 300 yards of the park. Nobody's going to be complaining about that when you have easily a capitalistic lead to where Arch Manning is coming in, playing in the second half, really getting some experience and better in reps to be able to take control just in case of anything. That, I think, is what you want to get. I think the other thing that you really want in this game is to continue to see the growth and the maturity of a guy like Isaiah Bond as the number one wide receiver because of I think that right now we're getting Texas back to what we saw when they played against Oklahoma, where they were able to run the football, they had that secondary punch, but when you get to the postseason, if Texas can, because there still are a lot of ifs in the SEC, so let's not jump the horse a little bit too quickly, but if they do get in the postseason, I think that this is going to be one of those moments where you have to establish who is your top threat. And seeing that relationship form with Matthew Golden, seeing that relationship form with Isaiah Bond, being able to capitalize on those one or two big-time shots downfield is going to benefit, I think, a, co a guy like Quinn Ewers, especially in this type of game that will carry on into December, carry on into January. It will allow him to boost up that ego and that mojo about what this team can be. But this is also a really big time opportunity for Travis Williams, the defense coordinator, to show the performance that we had against Ole Miss 
was a blip on the radar. The performance that we had in the second half against Oklahoma State, it, was, it wasn't pretty, but we were able to show you that we got it back when we played against Nico Iamaliava in Tennessee. We were able to mitigate several flaws against a team like LSU. Our ground game, our, gr- our run defense really struggled. So there's a lot of opportunities here for Quinn Ewers. It's to get back in the conversation of QB1 in the SEC. For Travis Williams, it's to create those turnovers. It's to take away the short passes, make Quinn beat you deep. In fact, in my opinion, if, if you want to win this game, if you're Arkansas, you have got to be able to force Texas to live in third and long where those deep shots down the field are going to have to happen in the first half. Because you got to remember, back in that game against Vanderbilt, one of the key elements for the Commodores to come back in the fourth quarter was they made Quinn Ewers have those short dink and dunk passes, and they weren't working, so he had to go over the top. If Travis Williams can do that, this could at least be an intriguing second half, I think, for my money. And I think it's a big game, Cole, for Travis Williams also from this standpoint. You know, our, our good buddy Dave Shoemate has talked about this a lot. The, the the T will slide at the end of the season. They just, for whatever reason, they do. You know, whether it's it's a battle of attrition, obviously, you lose players, you lose depth. But his defense is, you know, if you look over the course of his career as a D coordinator, his defenses tend to slide in, in yep. the season. And so this is a big one, I think, for – not necessarily his stock as like a coach, because I think T. Will's a really good coach, but just his overall stock and that perception of, okay, like every year we can kind of expect your defense is probably going to be playing not their best in the month of November towards the end of the season when you really need them in crunch time like this. And again, the challenge is great with Quinn Ubers in that offense. And you mentioned the passing defense that Arkansas features. You got to think Steve Sarkeesian is, is salivating, right? Because this is a, listen, this is a revenge game for him. I, I don't yeah. know if, Necessarily, we're saying this is a, a revenge game for Texas because how many of these guys were on that 2021 team that went into Fayetteville and got punched in the face? I don't know, but for Sark, I think for Sark, this one he's probably going to take pretty personally. I, I got to imagine after – I mean, he got embarrassed. Like, his team got embarrassed. In I think the other – I think the other thing is that you realize what you have at your disposal at the wide receiver spot. Matthew Golden has been Mr. Consistency inside the red zone. You have a speed threat in Isaiah Bond. You have Silas Bolden. You have Ryan Wingo that's probably going to see his role expand now with Jonte Cook gone. You have DeAndre Moore, who could have had a touchdown and has stepped up at times inside the slot. You still have a great tight end duo in Gunnar Helm and, uh, and Juan Davis. You can run the football. You have it 6.8 yards per play. And so if you can make those explosive plays happen, it, it adds a little bit more fuel to the fire. And, and more importantly, Chris, this is a rivalry game. There is a leave no doubt expectation, and especially for Steve Sarkeesian, because the last thing that you can also afford to do when you look at Texas's schedule is go 10-2 and two with two losses to teams in Texas A&M and to Georgia, and then sit there and go into those conversations and scenarios of what if. The style points will matter. And a style point in a game against an Arkansas team that you would now hold the head-to-head over when it comes to Tennessee, who also could be 10-2, and two, how you looked in that performance, it's a big deal. It is. But also on the flip side, for Arkansas, you being able to say you own UT, depending on which one, they both are orange, they both have <laughs> UT in their name, they argue who is the real one, it's a big deal. So there's a lot of reasons to believe that both these sides have something to play for. For my money, though, it's another moment for Sark to prove to everybody, hey, it was 2021. Get over it. You've seen the growth and the development. Because the last thing you also want to hear is kind of what you're hearing right now down in Tallahassee. Well, we saw that growth with Mike Norvell, and now we don't know if he's the right guy for the job. Well, you saw that growth with Steve Sarkeesian. Nobody believes that he's going to be fired anytime soon. But there will be people who say, why can't you beat Arkansas? Why do you have to play close against Vanderbilt? Why don't can't you beat Georgia? This is the SEC, damn it. Start acting like it. And to your point, Cole, the flip side, too, you know, we're, we're talking about Stark and, and the preparation. Bobby Petrino with two weeks to get ready. So do with, that, do with that information what you will. Taylor, it'll it'll take Taylor Green, obviously, having a big-time horse. But this Arkansas offense is dangerous, man, with Quinn and Jackson, the running back spot. And I've, I've talked all year. I love their wide receivers. I think it's a, a very underrated wide receiver group. But Taylor Green, it goes without saying, is going to have to play well. Probably has to out-duel Quinn Ewers and – Bobby Petrino will have to call one of the best games he's called all year. And that offensive line, too, man. I mean, they're going up against a fantastic Texas defensive front. I don't know if they can really withstand that for four quarters, but uh, they're going to have to. They're going to have to hold their own. 
the other thing that you have seen really consistently over the last few weeks is other role players stepping on up for Texas front seven. No Vernon Broughton in the first half against Florida. It didn't matter. I mean, the targeting call in the Commodores game took him out, and he has been one of the bigger finds this year for Texas. They were still mitigating the overall rushing attack. They were taking out Jaden Baugh. They were taking out Jacoby Jackson. They were forcing Aiden Warner to have to throw, and that was just a recipe for disaster. Trey Moore. Former AAC Defensive Player of the Year really hadn't had that big time moment this season. Did against our, did against Florida. This is where a game like last week can carry momentum into this week. And we all know what Taylor Green is. When he is on point, he is a top five quarterback in the SEC. I'll go on record mm-hmm. believing that because of the overall attributes this kid has. It's second to none. And by Petrino handpicked Taylor Green to run his offense, so there is a confidence factor in knowing that this is a QB that can easily win the point of attack. But he is a roller coaster of anxiety and emotions. Grab your thumbs, grab your airbag, and make sure that you're breathing heavily into the paper bag because if you don't know what to expect whenever number 10 takes the field, you can get a 50-yard blast downfield to Andrew Armstrong. You can get a 25-yard gain to Luke Haas. You can get a turnover pick six that's easily just going to lead to now you having to turn to Malachi Singleton because Taylor Green's trying to make a tackle and he hurts his shoulder. I mean, like, that is the offense, unfortunately, at this point. For a team like Arkansas, it is never going to be easy. You are going to be feeling the lulls. You're going to be feeling the highs and lows, and you're not going to want to take a second ride. But this is, again, a moment where Texas can shore up and, more importantly, show who they are. This is another moment where Arkansas can show when we don't shoot ourselves in the foot, when we're doing things our way, we still are the team that people envision at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. So, Cole, with that being said, let's lock in our predictions for this game. I'll go ahead and start. You know, this is one, Cole, that I've gone back and forth on a little bit from the standpoint of, like we mentioned, rivalry game spot here. You never know what's going to happen in a rivalry game. Throw out the record books. And Arkansas is one of those teams, Cole, like you mentioned. They've been so hot and cold. And when they've been hot, you look at them and you're like, man, like they're really, really dangerous. They could jump up and by anybody in this conference. When they're cold, it gets pretty ugly. You give up 60 points to a team like Ole Miss, who, again, fantastic team, but still, you look the way you did. You get eventually uh, thoroughly dominated against LSU. You know, they've had their moments, right? I mean, they've had their moments both ways. Texas, I said, coming off the bye week, again, best thing that could have happened to them, recharge the batteries, get refocused, re-energized coming into the stretch that, again, essentially is going to define their season from the standpoint of locking in that playoff spot, potentially locking in Cole, that SEC title game spot. They're playing for much more uh, than most teams out there in college football right now. Again, dreams and national championships on the mind. Zeroing in on this matchup, Cole. I think the emotions of a rivalry game are very, very real. I think Arkansas, do they hate Texas more than they like Arkansas? I don't know, but I'd probably say it's pretty damn close because I can tell you firsthand, they hate Texas. I think Bobby Petrino and company, they're going to have a great game plan. Two weeks to get ready for Bobby Petrino to get in his bag. I think he's going to have a great plan ready to go against Texas. You mentioned Taylor Green. I think Taylor Green's one of those guys, when you build a quarterback on EA College Football 25, he's the kind of guy you build. He, he's, he's tall, he's long, he's fast, he's got a big arm. He, he's got all the attributes you want. Love their wide receiver room. Love Jaquin and Jackson. Cole, they're going to have to score points because I believe in the T-Will slide, unfortunately. I, I, I believe in the Travis Williams defensive slide. We've seen this every year, and it also doesn't help you're facing one of the best offenses in the country. That also does not help your, your, your cause there. So I think Arkansas is going to have to try to go blow for blow for Texas. I think at some point they're not going to be able to. I think maybe early on, Cole, the emotions of a rivalry game, like, you know, maybe we see some some uncharacteristic things from the Longhorns, if you will. But I think Texas is the better football team top to bottom. I think personnel-wise, they're just a better team. And I know what happened in 2021, Cole. That ain't going to happen again. This is a revenge spot for Steve Sarkeesian. I don't know if it's really a revenge spot for the Texas team specifically, because, again, how many of them were on that roster three years ago? I'm not sure. But for Sark specifically, I think he wants to go in, Cole. And to your point, I think he wants to show Arkansas is not going to be an issue for Texas 
any longer. That was a one-off. That was a blip on the radar. Now we're both in the SEC. Let's go mano a mano. Let's go out, make a point, and to your point, college football playoff conversation, style points are going to matter. The committee told us that last week. Hey, how are teams winning games? We watch the games. What does it look like? I think Texas, they got the message last weekend when they took down Florida the way they did. I think they'll go into Fayetteville. I think Texas is about to heat up, Cole. I really do. I think Texas is about to heat up down the stretch, build some big-time momentum. Again, early on, rivalry, could it be close? Sure, I wouldn't doubt it. But Texas will pull away. I think a big, big day from Quinn Ewers again. Give me Texas 44, Arkansas 20. So I've got Texas covering. I've got the over in this game. I think there will be points. And I think a lot of that is going to come again from Texas. You mentioned the Arkansas pass defense. Steve Sarkeesian, Quinn Ewers, I think he's able to hit some of those deep shots. They're going to have a really, really big day offensively and get a big statement win at DWR. Congratulations to Arkansas on getting the wake-up call it needed two weeks ago against Ole Miss. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, an offense that can easily be explosive against you and put up over 600 yards and 50 points. They can do that. And Texas can do that, too. I think the other thing that's really important, though, is you got two weeks. You got two weeks to look at that film. Look at a guy like Jordan Watkins. Look at a guy like Juice Wells. Look at a guy like Caden Lee and Caden Priestcorn, who didn't play in that game, but Daquan Wright, the rushing attack, and say, Texas has those same type of athletes, if not better. Our defense, our defense has to be able to slow them down. Our offense cannot look the way that we did against Ole Miss's defense because they have the same athletes. And so I think this is going to be a game where they have circled on the calendar rivalries carry a lot of weight and they're going to deliver a performance to remember. I do believe this. I I really do. But I also believe in the five stages of grief, which is unfortunately what Arkansas fans are going to see on Saturday. So let's go through them. Denial. Denial is you're up 10, nothing after the first two drives, you get a big time explosive touchdown pass to Luke Haas, a big time play to Andrew Armstrong, and then you get another field goal. And so now you're feeling good, feeling really good. And then here comes Texas. Quinn Ewers maybe throws an interception. And then he comes back, he throws a touchdown pass to Isaiah Bond. And then after he throws a touchdown pass to Isaiah Bond, Quintavious Weisner is able to go ahead and boot scoot and boogie like Brooks and Dunn into the end zone for a 20-yard gain. And then you get Silas Bolden to return a punt return. Now it's 21 to 10. And so you're getting into the anger stage. What was this? What is this type of performance? We had two weeks to prepare. We felt good about ourselves. We just felt the lust and the anger and the animosity of losing to Ole Miss in historic fashion. So you start to bargain, and you're bargaining with yourself. Well, let's get back in this game going into halftime, and the bargaining is where you get another touchdown. You watch as Taylor Green takes off for a 30-yard gain, and then you see Andrew Armstrong for six points, or you see Jaquin and Jackson bulldoze over Vernon Broughton at the goal line. And there's the bargaining. We're making this a game. We're making this a good one. We feel really good about ourselves. And then here comes Texas in the second half, and it's depression. And it's, okay, this is what Texas is doing. This is what we are doing. We have to have a serious conversation about what's going on with Sam Pittman, what's going on with this organization. We want to be a team that we think can get to the conversation of a college football playoff threat. And as all this is going on, here comes Quinn Ewers. Here comes Jaden Bloom. Here comes Gunnar Helm, one of the best tight ends in the SEC that not doesn't get talked about enough. He finds one in the end zone, and now it's a 20-point lead and then acceptance. Acceptance that this rivalry, as much as you hate Texas, you're not there just yet. You may have some pieces. You may feel really good about the direction that this program could be going in in the recruiting aspect or in the transfer portal aspect. But in a rivalry game where Steve Sarkeesian needs the style points to guarantee his spot in the college football playoff. The five stages of grief hit Razorback Stadium. I agree with you. I'm going 40 to 20. Also, final score. I believe this is one where Texas shows on out. And unfortunately, the T-Will slide continues to take another twist and turn heading into the month of November. Cole, well done. The five stages of grief. That was a very great explanation of that. I I, uh, commend you on that. So anyways, guys, what do you think? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree? How do you see this one playing out when Texas and Arkansas do battle on Saturday? Guys, that's going to do all for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in again. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast, wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. 
For Cole Thompson, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we will catch you on the other side.